The next tool here is the Pages tool. It's not really relevant on a one-page document, so I'm going to come back to that. Then we've got the Gap tool. And this is an unusual tool. If I click between the edge of the page and an object, there is the Gap tool flying into action, and it tells me up there on the control bar how far away my cursor is, but the width spec tells me how far away the object is from the edge of the page, 1.1875 inches. So I can drag this and increase that gap, or I can decrease it, and it works with any object and that side of the page. I can also click between two objects and change the gap between those objects. So that's what the gap tool's for. Text tool we've already had a look at. You know pretty much what that does, but look, there's a little dark bottom right-hand corner to it, and that means there's a flyout menu. If I click and hold on the text tool, you can see the components. And we've got a regular type tool, and we've got type on a path. And the type on a path tool means that I could attach text to the edge of any one of these objects. Now what I do first of all is select the object. So let's say I've selected this one, and I'm going to zoom in so you can see it better. And then get the type on a path tool and come and click near it. See that little plus sign by the cursor? When you see that, if you click, you just added a live cursor to the object and you can type on it. Well, I would be able to if I could spell. There we go. And I could highlight that and come up here and change the font, the size, whatever. Letting wouldn't make much difference here, but font, size, style, and so on, they will. And I can move it around. We'll do some more of that a bit later on. I'm going to zoom out again. The line tool, which is next, oh, and I'm going to deselect this object, and the quick way to do that is Command-Shift-A or Control-Shift-A. And whereas Command or Control-A is Select All, if you add the Shift key as well, it's the opposite. It's Deselect All. And the line tool is great for drawing lines. How about that? There's a line, a default line. No fill, of course, because the line doesn't have a fill, and a stroke. And the default setting for the line stroke is one point wide in black, and it's a solid line. That's the style of the line. We could have dotted. We could have dashed. We can have solid. We can have all kinds of different kinds of line. We can change the width. 10 points. Now if I choose dotted, you'll be able to see it, whereas before you probably couldn't. So there's lots of different styles of lines that you can create. And here's a good tip. If you want to draw a line and you want it to be horizontal, hold down the shift key as you draw it. Now look, I'm going to drop my cursor way down. It becomes 45 degrees vertical. So it's constrained to 45 degree angles. If I draw that out to here and let go, there's a one point rule. Now I'm going to select it again. And how about if I want to change its length? Now I can do that here. There's an L field now. That's the length field in the control bar. Or I could do it manually. I could grab that end and pull to the left. And now if I drop my cursor way down, all that happens is it keeps being a straight horizontal line, and that is really useful. So once you've constrained a line to being horizontal, 45 degrees, or vertical, with the selection tool, you cannot then pull it out of true. With the direct selection tool, oh yes, you can. You can pull it out to being any angle you want, but with the selection tool, you can't.